Yes. Yes. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you all very much. If you want to go cameras on, it's always more fun to see everybody's faces, but if you don't want to, that's fine too. If uh, you're wearing the uh, virtual meeting mullet, right? You know, business on top and party on the bottom. Always a fan of that as well. So either way, everybody welcome uh, to the show tonight, right? My name is Josh Agatson. I am the uh, one of the founders of a company called PM Perlin and a business partner with them. I'm a brand ambassador with Salute to Suit. Really excited to bring you all in with A-Rod uh, as the founder and CEO of Salute to Suit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and kick it off with him and uh, you know, kind of talk through a little bit of his background, you know, why we're here today, and then we're gonna finish out tonight talking through a topic near and dear to my heart called the power of certifications and really understanding how to not only make sure that you look good on the outside, but make sure that you look good on the inside with the right talent and skills and resume as well, right? So before we get started, any questions from anybody right now? Let's do this. Everybody, I wanna say thank you for your service. Every single one of you, it means very, very dear to my heart to be part of this community. Uh, I kinda of wanna share a little bit about who I am, what we do and why we do it. I think a lot of people that are on maybe already know that, but for those of you who don't, let me walk you through a little bit. Before I get started, I wanna welcome uh, newest member of our team and one of our new suit advisors as well as a brand ambassador, that's Stephen, Stephen Porter. I see you in the house, my friend. So welcome, Stephen, as a new member of Salute to Suit. So Hi, as you can all see, if you can see me or not, I'm an old guy. I mean, I spent the past 47 plus years perfecting my craft in the fashion world. Uh, been very blessed by actually owning a suit manufacturing company, which makes me the direct source. I myself never wore the uniform. Uh, I was a sick kid growing up, but I've been surrounded by military people my entire life. And I saw firsthand the challenges and difficulties as you, know, as you serve for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, you know, that's all you know is that uniform, right? Well, now it's time for your TAPS classes and medical board and that next chapter of your life. And on top of all that, you gotta buy professional attire. So the questions pop up, where do you start? Where do you go? Who can you trust? So about eight years ago, I created Salute to Suit with five services in mind that we're gonna walk you through today and some, some other uh, topics we'll cover. Um, it's become my passion to really educate and empower the military community. So as a tip, before we get started, you know, before you got, walk into that first store or department store or men's retail store or women's, you want to ask that individual one question. How long have they been doing this? If they tell you five years and under, run the other way. The reason why is because they're, they don't have the knowledge to really share with you um, to, to kind of service what you need. Not about trying to sell you, but really service you. So make sure you ask that one question. That's a good place to start. Uh, also, you know, give yourself uh, a word of assessment. How does that look? Well, walk into your closet and maybe means through alterations, you'll be able to save something, maybe a sport coat, maybe a blazer, maybe a dress, um, you know, put it by category. Okay, go through your stuff and see what do you need? Is it basic dress shirts, the basic colors, white, gray, blue, women's glasses? Write yourself a little list so that when you walk into any store, you're prepared. You're not gonna walk in blindfolded. And after today's uh, session and topic and showcase, I tr trust me this, that you're gonna know more than the associate will when you walk into that uh, establishment, that's for sure. So with that said, we're gonna walk, we're gonna walk here, it's perfect, we already got it up, Josh. So we're gonna talk about fit. And this is for men and women, okay? There's a slim fit and a modern fit. As you can see by the picture, I'm gonna go kind of off the cuff. On a slim fit jacket, the armhole and the chest is very snug. The pant, Waist, seat, and crotch is also short and snug. That's the nature of that silhouette. A modern fit is more relaxed. So before you go shopping for that first suit or additional suits, ask yourself, do you want your clothing to feel snug or relaxed? You know, we want to buy for the bodies we have, not the bodies we want, <laughs> right? So or the body you're going to have once you leave the military and decide <laughs> to put on a few pounds. Yeah. You know, and you're done, right? I mean... 
my perspective, I, I don't know. I, I'm a modern fit guy, right? Even on the slim shirts, if you're fitted and work out, you know, slim to me still just gets tight, right? So my, my preference is a modern fit. Um, if you like the skinny jeans look, you know, by all means, go ahead. But I will tell you, hanging out in a suit all day, modern fit just gives you a little bit more room um, and there's a little more comfort personally, right? I'm not saying that slim doesn't work. But right. given the uniforms we've worn, if you're a Marine, you got that one inch barrier in your chest, you know, in your dress uniform, that's great. I don't want to be in that all day long, right? So I'd say look into a modern fit. If you want to go slim, by all means, just that's right. Let, let's, let's talk about fabric. Now, this is going to be, I want to be very definitive here about fabric, but let's, let's start with this. There's a numbering system across the board that establishes a quality of a suit, okay? Especially ours. So when they're made, they're spun at a very high velocity. So the faster the fabric is spun, the higher quality the suit will become, all right? But there's, we have a standard collection, which I'm sure some of you purchased. We have a luxury collection that some of you purchased. So there's different fabrications, okay? So number one, the number one fabric that we produce is a high-tech, high-twist micro cloth. It is a synthetic, okay? Some depending on the colors, there's a little sheen to it, okay? To be quite frank, all right? But on that suit, make sure that it is 140 to 150 thread count, because at that number range, you're gonna get a suit that's gonna wear, travel, and breathe. And that's really important, okay? There's wools, there's silks, there's linens, all right? Wool, depending on the thread count, whether it be 100, 100 or 120, it's going to be kind of warm, okay? It's going to be insulated. Sometimes the wools don't breathe, but there's different kind of wools. There's different kind of mills. You know, there's Canali, there's um, Trudy 1881s, there's all kinds of mills that we work with that are Italian mills and Italian piece goods, okay? So before you find that suit, do you want a microfiber? Do you want an all wool? Or there's another fabric that's amazing it's part of our, our um, um, executive protection suit line. It's for guys who maybe conceal. Um, maybe they work for, you know, the FBI, CIA, they're in security. It's called a flex suit. It has Tetron uh, elastin in there. What's nice about this particular fabric, it breathes and it moves with you, okay? So there's a little bit about fabrications regarding suitings. Shirts, you got cottons, you know, you got cotton blend, you got uh, wrinkle free. So it just depends on the kind of shirts you want when you start buying them. Make sure that it has mother of pearl buttons. Make sure that uh, it's going to breathe. Some shirts have polyester in them, which is fine because uh, when you launder it, it's going to hold. So keep those all those things in mind when you talk about fabrication. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you yeah. Two for everybody. One, if you all have questions, please just jump in and ask a question. Don't wait for the proper time. This is really for you guys to learn. So treat this like an open-ended class and also kind of a networking event. Um, so again, if you've got LinkedIn profiles, you want to drop them in to everybody. I'll drop mine in here a little bit later too. It's a great chance to reach out. I know that Stephen already did it. But, you know, fabric is, is what it is, right? Aaron talks about sheets and like 400 count sheets, right? Well, if you get the really high count sheets, sometimes they're really hot right? Or they're not very durable. So the, the point he's bringing up on the threads and looking at a 140 to 150 is it's kind of the perfect middle ground between something that's going to be quality, look good, but also be durable. And I've seen this issue as I've traveled around with jackets and things like that too, that, you know, look, this look really nice on the rack, but then when you wear it, you know, you brush on something and it's going to fray or look bad, right? So I think the 140 to 150 is a good range, no matter what the fabric is, in terms of wool, the microfiber, or he let the cat out of the bag on the uh, personal protection line. That's a new launch <laughs> coming out here with a Rod, which I'm trying to shush him up a little bit. But it's a new line, a new line coming out. Uh, I think it'll be a great line for the, the company because most vets always kind of have a defensive mindset and being able to move a little bit better in your suit, just in case someone gets a, uh, gets a little froggy out there. Right. It's something nice to have. And I got a chance to try out one of these jackets are pretty awesome. Um, I, 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 thank you, buddy. Okay, so now, here we go. We're on style. This is for men and for women. You want to keep it timeless, classic. Like it says here, a two-button model. There's vents in the back. For men, you want a double vent. 
They make a center vent. But what happens on a center vent, if we have junk in the trunk, it's going to come out and skirt out and look kind of awkward. Women can wear a center vented jacket because on the women's clothing, most of the jackets are shorter. They're right at the waistline, okay, or at the hips. So men stick with a two-button model. Women, same thing. Non-pleats on the pants. You know, some guys, there's, you know, we'll talk about personal brand later, but some men like a cuff. Most men shouldn't wear a cuff. That's just my personal opinion. Um, when you start talking about style, um, I'm, I'm pretty set in my ways. I'm going to tell you, i share this with you. You know, every single one of you should dress to accommodate and accentuate your own individuality. Find that one thing that separates you from everyone else. Example, maybe for the men, you want crazy ties. Maybe you like stick pins, tie bars, pocket squares, crazy socks. Find that one item. Women, maybe it's a handbag. Maybe it's a certain watch you wear or a pair of earrings, jewelry, what have you. But if you pick that one thing, own it because, that, you know, don't follow fashion rules, trends, or fads. That's why they're called that. But if you stick with things that are a timeless, classic, you'll never, it never go wrong. Okay, because I kind of refer to what we do as investment dressing. So the money you're going to put in, it's going to last you a minimum seven to 10 years. And that's really, really important. When you go out there looking for a suit, you know, ask that guy, hey, or woman, how long is this suit going to last me? Is it going to last me one year, two years, five years? If he tells you five years and above, okay, how do you know that? Ask him the thread count. Ask him where it's made. Ask him how it's cut. You know, all these different things that you're going to learn as we're talking about this. It's going to help you in the long run. I mean, listen, truth be told, we want you to use us. But if you don't, that's okay. It's not a deal breaker. You know, my passion is to really give you the, my 47 years of knowledge and share it with all of you, the whole military community, so they can learn from it. And then they can maybe they walk into a store with a great sale. But how do you know what's a great sale? And how do you know it's a great suit or a great shirt? Sure. Now you know after this class. I can tell you that. Go ahead, Josh. Want to say something? The vents, right? Who knows what a vent is? I know he talks about single vent, double vent. Who's what, who knows what a vent is? Because no one's going to be willing to ask and be like, I'm clueless right now, right? Who knows what a vent is? It should be the thing on the back of the of the coat, right? That's correct. Correct. Oh, yeah, I was going to show you, but I got the blur screen on the back right now on mine, so it didn't look right. But essentially on the back side, if you got a double vent, when you reach down the back of your jacket, there's a flap, a single flap in the back with two holes on the sides. Hey, that's a double vent. A single vent, you think of like uh, with the tails, right? Big split down the middle, right? So a single vent is down the middle, and the double vent has one on I each see, side. I, I see Jeff there. Jeff, you like a double vent, right, Jeff? Yeah, I, I do. I prefer a double vent. All right, good. See, yeah. you can speak. Right, right beneath the, the shoulders, when the shoulder starts, right beneath the shoulders, there's a cut there, a double vent. Uh, okay, well, on the shoulders, there's different kind of shoulders. There's a softer shoulder and then there's a padded shoulder. Some gentlemen do not like too much pads. So we don't put like a two or three inch pad inside the jacket on the shoulder. It's more of an inch, inch and a half. So the silhouette, uh, it all drapes perfectly opposed to padded shoulders and then come in. It looks kind of funny. So, you know, you want these kind of symmetrical on a, on a jacket, okay? The vents are on the bottom. The vents are on the bottom of the jacket is where you'll right. find Right, the vents are on the bottom of the jacket. That is correct. It's an opening, a double opening. Sometimes when you buy a suit, it might be uh, pinned down or there's a thread that's sewn. You have to cut that so it drapes. Yep. Now, right. hey, there's a question from Doug on, can he come by and do a window shop uh, out in Vegas? Can he come by the store? Is there a physical store in Vegas? We have, we have exactly six locations that are all tailors. So when someone comes to Vegas or we have clients that see us because we do a lot of business with Nellis and Creech out here, we're by appointment only. They can't come by, correct? They, they, no, the answer is no, they cannot come by. They, they have to book an appointment. Book an appointment, okay. But they book an appointment, they can still stop by. That's correct. Got it, okay. Nice question, I like it. So that's fit, fabric, style. Let's talk about color. I want to ask there's everybody, notes, by the way, a, there's quizzes later for giveaways. So make sure you're paying attention and writing stuff down so you can. So, so here's a question play. I have. 
Josh, how many people are, are on the on the Zoom call? Uh, give me one second. And we'll find out. 32. 32. Okay. Now, I want to ask a question. Has any one of you heard, and I'm, I'm not talking about uh, our, our clients that already purchased from us. This is for the ones who have not. Has any one of you heard of the seven-second rule? Don't say anything, Jermaine. <laughs> Has anyone heard of the seven-second rule? It's not the one where the food falls down, you, you pick it up. I'm kidding, but all kidding aside, have anyone heard of this rule? No one? The first impression, right? It is a first impression, but let me be very definitive. As human beings, we have this defense mechanism. When we meet someone for the first time, especially for interviews, from the time and way you shake their hand, eye contact, men, facial hair, men and women, jewelry, fragrance, and what you're wearing from the neck down, there's always a story to tell, believe it or not. So gentlemen, never wear a black suit. It's very intimidating. It also shows that you didn't take the time to really look into colors like navy blue, charcoal gray, medium gray or indigo blue. All those colors are very apropos and acceptable. Okay, when you're wearing ties, you wanna stick with burgundies and blues. Why? Because it shows trustworthy, confidence. Same thing for women. But women can wear a black suit and here's why. It's very elegant, sophisticated, and very professional on a woman than opposed to a man. Now, women can also wear, obviously, navy, charcoal, medium gray, but they can wear the black. Blouses, again, it depends on what your, your personal brand is. Do you want that color? Maybe it's pastels. Maybe they're bright colored blouses. You know, in a little bit here, we're going to go over the 10 fashion items that stand the test of time for men and women. Okay? But uh, color is really important, believe it or not. I mean, every, every time you're wearing something, whether it be business or business casual, which we also will get into in a little bit, uh, tells a story about you, okay? What about skin complexion versus suit color? Very good, okay. The great thing about the classics and the basics, like navy, charcoal, medium gray, indigo blue, it's gonna go with light complected, medium complected, dark complected, because the shirts you're gonna wear or the blouses are gonna have an accent of color. White, light blue, light gray, light pink, lilac. On the women's side, maybe it's purple, it's a bright pink. Uh, maybe it's teal blue, uh, maybe it's aqua, okay? But the, the base of the suit for men and women, keep those four colors and you cannot go wrong. When you're building your wardrobe, it's like building a house. It's a strong, you want a strong foundation. So once you have all the basics covered, then you can have fun pinstripes, plaids, textures, um, you know, you can do things like that. But to start, you want to keep it simple because it's classic, timeless, and will never go out of style. It's really, really important in regards to- Transitioning, you know, veteran's perspective and anyone else who wants to jump in has been this road, right? I think walking in knowing that you're not going to violate a cultural norm is always a good idea, right? Now, there was a post today about beards or no beards. Right now, I teach another class called the Empowered Transition. I invite you all to attend. But as you do your research into a company, you can gather, hey, what's the best first impression to make? Because whether you like it or not, perception is reality. Right. And if you talk to a recruiter, you talk to a hiring manager, you talk to somebody in the company and they're like, hey, look, we don't mind people having beards, but this hiring manager has a preference on, on clean shavenness. You can walk in bearded all you want to, but realize it's kind of like that first date. You really want to start from a perception that you're already having to dig yourself out of a hole. If you know that, look, they like this color suit or these are good starting points, right? Going in with a solid general color as a foundation is always a safe play that looks professional. Once you get the job or once you're more confident in your career, when you want to go crazy and do plaids and big stripes or, you know, you know, seersuckers, right? I mean, hey, do what you want, right? Based on the culture of the company, but in the interview, in the job search, having a good couple solid, like a navy blue and a gray, or a light gray or indigo, right? Set yourself up so you have something that you can walk into 
an environment and be looked at as a professional, right? Especially if it's, yeah, dirty beards, right? Clean shaven and clean looking. Um, I like that. Roberto, Roberto just said something. I love it. Especially the beard's not lined up. Yeah. You're right, Roberto. You're, you're right on, buddy. But again, there's guys that don't. I mean, Herb Thompson, if you guys know him on LinkedIn, he's a special forces guy with a beard down to his belly button, right? I mean, you could live in his damn beard. He clearly got a job afterwards, but he got hired because of the brand he had built. Stefan has a nice the beard. Interview side, right? <laughs> so there's no yes or no. There's no must have, don't have. But realize it's a relational conversation. You want to walk in setting the conditions to have a professional conversation, depending on the culture of the company. Okay, early beard stage. Some of that's fine. I mean, that's what you got. Like, you need to talk to somebody on the inside. Find a veteran. Use LinkedIn as a human intelligence tool. Connect with a vet who works there and ask them what proper protocol is. So you're set up before you walk into that interview. Now, if you're doing walk around job fairs, that's a target rich environment and it's competitive. Doing something that sets you apart can be good. Doing something that puts a bad taste in somebody's mouth is always bad. That's true. Right? So, again, I'm not saying don't have a beard. I'm just saying show up looking a professional in what you think that is. If you show up feeling like you look good, you will present with confidence hey, in those question. interviews and those engagements. I, I if got a you're question. not confident, you will feel it in the conversation. How so, many ladies do we have uh, on Zoom right now? At least one. Okay. This question is for you to win a nice black women's blazer. What's her name? I see Tracy and Andrea. Who else we got? Right, well, well, let's see. Let's see who can answer this question. From this is from the the, the ladies. Okay. You ready? What is the seven second rule? Can anyone answer that for a free woman's black blazer? No? Okay. We'll see from the next day. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll answer the question, sir. Uh, who, who's that? <laughs> no, I was, I was Tracy joking. Tracy started no, texting. We got to give her the first shot. Can you call me, Tracy? <laughs> Tracy Lewis. You're lady in this. Uh, I'm sorry. I, my daughter was uh, shouting in the background. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. It's a family-friendly environment. Seven-second rule. Talk to me. Uh, basically that you have seven seconds to make the best first impression. So people are going to look yes, at, but I was very definitive on certain what's things. included in that. The only thing I specifically remember is that you said they will look at what you're wearing from the neck down. And then you went into the colors of the suit. Okay. All right. That's good enough. You get a blazer. Yay. Okay. So go ahead and, uh, Josh, you take care of these things, all right? All right, go ahead and shoot me an email then. I'm going to put it in here. All right. All right. This awesome, is thank you. Some swag, you ready? Shirt and tie right now. A shirt and tie right now for who answers questions for the gentleman. How long have I been doing this? Boom. 45, 45 years. 45 years. Nope. 45 plus years. Nope. All right. 47. 47. Who said 47? I did. Awesome. It's right. Man, Jermaine, what, man, you're always winning something, man. That's something else, man. <laughs> Jeff Heller right. had the first first response back. Right, you want somebody I mean, else to win? Okay. I think Jeffrey Heller gets the win on that one because he was Jeffrey putting Huffman, on the 47. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. I, got some more swag. I got some more swag. So let's keep it going here. All right. Here's okay. a question for all of you. Most people fall into one of these four dilemmas. Okay. I want to... Show of hands or click on yes, 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 or no, no, no. Hate to shop. Don't have the time to shop. Put together a great outfit and have a hard time distinguishing certain colors. Those are four facts, four dilemmas that most people fall into. Am I correct or incorrect? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> Good. Not the hate to shop. A few adamant no's on that one, uh, but everything else is good. Okay. Well, here's the thing. The reason why I said that is because I want to illustrate that all of you deserve to have a stress-free experience. So wherever you decide to go, make sure that when you walk in, that you're being taken care of for what you need, not someone to sell you something. 
So those are four dilemmas that uh, Salute to Sue kind of focuses on to alleviate for all of you, okay? Now, let's talk about the five fashion categories. All of us, you know, depending on our lifestyle, fall into one or all of these fashion categories, all of us, depending on, you know, are we, are we home all the time with our children, family affair, um, sporting events, um, black tie affairs, golf, whatever it may be, these are five fashion categories, okay, that one of us will fall into, or all of us. Business, business casual, leisure, golf, and formal. But let me, let me be more definitive and touch on every single topic. Business. Business means always suited and booted. That means you're always wearing a suit with a shirt and a tie. You mean business. You're, you, you got the job. It's for an interview. You have a business meeting, whatever it may be. It's really, really important in regards to business. It's always with a suit and a shirt and tie. Let's talk about business casual. There's a lot of definitions for business casual, okay? But let me give you the facts. A business casual means always wearing a sport coat or a blazer for men with chino pants, a pair of jeans, a pair of dress slacks, open collared shirt for ladies, maybe a pair of leggings, a blazer, a nice blouse, but you're always wearing a coat or a blazer. Here's the biggest difference. A blazer is a solid, solid color. Navy, black, purple, orange, yellow. A blazer is a solid color. Remember that. A sport coat has character, texture. Maybe it's a window pane. Maybe it's a plaid. Maybe it's a pinstripe. Uh, but it definitely has a pattern to it. So those are two definitive things. Sport coat or blazer, okay? Then there's leisure, you know, flip-flops, who knows, whatever we're comfortable in. Uh, golf, that's a personal thing. And formal, let me talk about formal. Gentlemen, this is a fashion faux pas. You never rent a tuxedo, ever. And the reason why you do not rent a tuxedo, because it looks like a rented tuxedo, this is where you would invest in a black suit, okay? Because a black suit, you can wear with a vest. You can wear a white tuxedo shirt, a black bow tie you tie yourself, and you're James Bond ready. Because most women are not going to wear, or excuse me, not going to rent a gown or a dress. They're going to buy one, okay? So keep that in mind. It's really important when you start talking about formal. So that's business, business casual, Leisure, golf, informal. Okay. And in the job world, I would start talking to people before you invest in a five suit wardrobe. Talk to the companies and find out what's the common dress attire for those companies, right? For you guys going into transition, I'd still always say have at least two suits. Okay. If you're right. just doing job fairs and you're still two to three years out, have one. Every company I've ever worked for, there's at least two visual engagements usually one at a hiring fair and then the interview and often the same person's in both. You don't want to show up wearing the exact same pair of clothes. Okay. So have at least two suits. Now, once you get hired or talking to people, what is common attire? The first job I had was a construction project manager. Okay. I still walked the job site in the dirty warehouse in a suit for my interview. And then it was steel toe boots and a polo shirt and jeans was common attire every day at work. Okay, but you still had to have a couple of suits to get the job. Then I became a consultant in DC. We were business casual, always button downs with a sport coat hanging on the back of the door with a tie, just in case you had to go to an interview on site or meet with a client. Okay, so, you know, again, everyone's job is different. I think having one farther out to two in transition is always a safe bet. You know, whether you got a tux, that's up to you. I'm a huge fan of the black suit and throwing a vest. And just make it look better. Um, but A Rod, question: How much are your tuxes? I want to say they're like three to four hundred dollars. Well, we have a we have a formal collection. It's three ninety seven. You get a tailor fitted tuxedo, a shirt, tie, pocket square, vest for three ninety seven. Is that from Jeff Womack? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt with Josh talking, so I just figured I would kind of okay. poke poke the bear in, in <laughs> Vegas and say. 
All right, well, here. Advertise your tuxes. Here you go. You ready? Who wants to who wants to win a suit right now? A men's suit. Here we go. All right. Here's the here's the question. And it's gotta be spot on. Okay. What are the five services that we salute to suit give to the military community? Five services. That was Tony Wilson. I know. Go, Tony. Oh. Uh what five services? That we give to you. When we take care of you. I don't know. All right. Is in the title of the event. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> uh, free wardrobe assessment, customer service, guaranteed quality assurance, personal clother, virtual fitting. Taylor. Uh, that you know who who was that from? Who, who? It was Doug? Oh, okay. Jason just got it. Jason Wink was it Winkleman? Yes, Jason? that's correct. Yes. Okay, yeah. Josh, you just got it. Jason. Yes. Okay, you got a suit, buddy. Woo there you go. There was someone hey, Doug, else, those were great comments, but hold on, there was someone else that was talking that said about um the other the other services that we give. Who was that? It was Doug. Doug. Hey, Doug. Yes. Okay. Because of the service you did. I'm gonna give you a suit too, buddy. Even though they're awesome not, thing. even though they're not fit, fabric style, color, affordability, I'm gonna still give you one. How's that? That'll help. Yeah, Thanks. These, these events it. are awesome. You got to share the word about the next one. There we go. Okay, <laughs> now let me share with the women. We still have ladies in, in, in the class. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna share with the ladies. Uh, the 10 fashion items that stand the test of time. Here we go. Okay. You got it? You're on mute. Screen oh, up there. All, right. all right. Here we go. All right. Suits. Gray. Black or navy blue. Got it. Thank you. A pair of black leggings. A basic t-shirt. You see it could be a crew neck, a v-neck, a cowl neck. Uh, an all-day everyday dress, as you can see by the pictures. I don't know if you see them or not. It's, it could be a solid, it could be a small pattern, it could be a texture, but definitely below the knee because you'll be able to put a blazer over that and you can dress it up, okay? A, a button-down shirt, a pair of blue jeans, a lightweight jacket, a classic blazer, a pair of black slip-on ankle boots, and of course, ladies, your handbag. Is it a tote? Is it a backpack, fanny pack? I suggest when you go to an interview, keep it like a small portfolio. Keep it simple, okay? Now, gentlemen, let's talk about the 10 fashion of the standard test of time. Remember, like I said earlier, when you're building a wardrobe, it's like building a house. You don't gotta spend a thousand bucks to start. Start small, okay, and go from there. So a medium gray suit, a navy suit, a white dress shirt, no button down collar. It has to be a straight collar. A black pair of chino pants, a pair of khaki chino pants, a navy blazer, there's that blazer again, a pair of chestnut brown or peanut butter colored lace up shoes, a pair of black shoes, pale blue colored shirt, and a pair of blue jeans. Okay, let me touch on shoes for a second. Okay, as you can see by the picture, they're more of a rounded toe. That's on purpose. You want to stay away from a square toed shoe because the way clothing is today for men, it's a little more tapered. So if you have a square toe, it's going to accentuate your feet. A rounded toe shoe is not. And you don't want to bring attention, if, especially if you're wearing a size 12 or 13 or 14 shoe, right? So keep it in a round toe. So those don't are 10 items for men. Frames with a suit. What's that? Don't wear your military core frames with a suit. I'll just no. tell you. You tell them, Josh. Right about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Roberto, what's going on? What's that? All right, so I, don't, I see I see what he's saying about the shoes and the square toe and all that stuff. Um, I, I'm over here in Texas, and a big thing out here is, like, people wear the button-up shirt, the jeans, the blazer, and then some cowboy boots. How you guys That's feel hate. about that? Love it. I actually love it. It's like it. a Texas thing, though. But yeah, most of the time, fact, they're going to be square toe. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, on the boots, it's different. It's not a dress shoe, right? 
So, I mean, you got Lucchese's out there. I mean, you got so many brown of boots that maybe it's more of a pointed toe. Right? So Stefan, why don't you speak to that? You're from Texas. I think he's gone off grid, but I'll, I'll speak no, to no, that. No, no, hey, no. My, there he my, is. My, my, my mouse was sticking. So, no, no hey, te you're spot on. In Texas, those are all good, The especially jeans. I would tell you that know your audience there too, right? Like uh, Josh was saying, um, some places it's got to be like a new crisp jean. In other places, it can be a little bit more worn, you know. Um, and then the boots, it's whatever boots you got. Don't wear your work boots, obviously. <laughs> other than that, no, it's good. The, bla the blazer, uh, really a sport coat for most of them. And the jeans and boots is, is pretty common for uh, for that business business casual down here, only with a ten gallon belt, right? <laughs> or, or a ten gallon hat. Hey, ten gallon hat and the giant buckle. But like I said, man, what's your brand? Whatever your brand is, rock it, own it, love it, enjoy it. Okay. Sometimes people take dressing too serious. Let's have a little bit of fun with it, right? Let's talk about this for a sec. Let's talk about three ways to buy a suit as for men and for women. Okay, off the rack. You walk into a store, whatever's hanging, that you have to choose from. The problem with off the rack is if you have, let's say, a 42 inch chest and a 32 inch waist, that's a 10 ounce, I mean, a 10 inch drop. Okay, then they have to pay for tailoring because most stores they're not they're going to charge you extra for tailoring, and that's a no no. Because now you're taking an off-the-rack suit that maybe doesn't fit that great, and they're trying to tailor it to you. That's a no-no. So I stay away from off-the-rack if you can, if possible. However, if you find an off-the-rack suit that, let's say, does fit somewhat okay, and maybe through means of alterations, and let's say you found it for $50 on sale, $75 on sale, and maybe for an extra $30, you can have it tailored to you, and that's a good investment. But when it comes to tailoring, that's really important. We'll talk about after. So off the rack, I say stay away from it unless you find that one store that's going to cater to you and say, hey, here's a great sale. Uh, it includes tailoring uh, or minimal tailoring. Okay. Tailored made. Let's, let's, let me talk about this. Tailored made is the same as made to measure. Some people say made to measure is custom. It is not. When I hear that term, the hairs in my back stand up, okay? I'm going to talk about custom in a second. But tailor-made is the same as made to measure. That means that it's a pre-constructed garment, okay? So I'll just give you the way we do it. We have actual shells, and it's short, regular, or long, or extra long, depending on your height. That's why after 47 years of me doing this, I have a technique or fitting technique that allows me to run about 95% accurate by having those shells from size 36 to 37, 38, 39, all the way to 64 allows us to get a pretty good fit on them, okay? But once we know if you're a short, a regular, long, or extra long, then we put on the sleeves. Is it a modern fit? Is it a slim fit? There's different silhouettes that we can carry because we own the manufacturing company, okay? So tailor-fitted, when you walk into a store, you say, I want a made-to-measure suit, tailor-made, tailor-fitted, okay? It should include tailoring. It has to include tailoring. That, that's a must. Do not purchase a suit unless it includes tailoring. That's tailor-fitted, made-to-measure clothing, okay? If they don't do hemming, that's okay. As long as they do tailoring and everything else, you can do a hem for 10, 12 bucks. You're good to go, all right? Yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you, right? So, so my own experience with, with another box store, right? You walk in and I'm like, hey, make me look good. And they're like, they're all good. Why don't you just pick one? Right. Like, that, that doesn't really help, right? It, right, right. I don't know what I'm supposed to look like. I don't, you know, I don't know where to start, right? So knowing and being educated when you walk in about sizing is good. Tailoring wasn't included. The tailoring in those cases was simply hemming and adjusting the sleeves. Let, right? let me, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right. Doug Bryan just had a question. Uh, there's a company called Indochino. Uh, they do a pretty good job, but they're not all that they say that they are. I mean, if anyone used them, the people that has told me, it's hard to find someone to really talk to and get it up. But 
but they are tailor made to measure. They're not custom. Let's get that straight. Indochino is not custom made. It's tailored made to measure. And sometimes they do a pretty good job. Okay. And I believe that's a pretty good pricing as well. Let's talk about custom made. That's my world. Okay. My schooling comes from Salvador Row, London. Bespoke. That is the true word. B-E-S-P-O-K you see on the screen. I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, uh, The Kingsman. Any of that movie that they wear custom suitings. But a custom suit takes, here we go, six to eight weeks to create. It takes three and a half to four and a half yards to make a custom suit. Bottom line, custom means it's made from scratch. That means you lay it on a table, you have a magnifying glass, and you go through every nook and cranny, okay? When you see someone wearing a pinstripe suit, if those lines are not matched perfectly, it's not a custom suit. Same thing in a plaid or a window pane. A true custom suit starts at $2,000. If someone says to you, I get you a custom suit for $1,000 or $1,500, I say no, because it's probably made to measure or tailor fitted. So that's really important when you decide to go buy a suit and you want to buy a custom, know what you're getting. If you stick right in the middle, you'll be good to go. All right? Who wants to win some more swag? Anyone? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm ready. It's Jermaine. You know who this is. Hey, Rob, baby. Oh, man. I love it, brother. I love it. All right. Here you go, bro. What are the five fashion categories we all fall into for a beautiful shirt, tie, and a pair of links? And Malcolm freaking dropped it in before you even finished talking. Whoa. What? <laughs> yeah, cheating. Who was that? <laughs> who was that? Malcolm Sims. Malcolm jumped in there, man. You can you can call me quick draw. <laughs> There's another word. Man, Jermaine, you got Jet okay. Jermaine. Woo! <laughs> man, Jermaine. <laughs> quick draw. Hey. I like that. All right. So make a note. Give it to Josh. All right. They beat me that time. Shirt tie. Pocket <laughs> square and a pair of links. Love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's name. What, what happened? I love it. All right. Forget this one, Josh. This one here. Go through it. Forget the tailoring aspect right now. All right. Um, here, so here's, let me go through this. Questions for me about any topic we covered today. Fit, fabric, style, color, affordability, the do's and the don'ts, fashion faux pas. You know, has anyone here in the class already got started and purchased their first suit yet? Yes. Hey, right. I got a question. Yes, sir. So uh, I've been working on myself, uh, being less fluffy. Okay. Right. Uh, so I've dropped from like two thirty-five to like two fifteen. Wow! Congratulations, buddy. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So I mean, you know, we kind of done with shirt stays, kind of like what Josh had mentioned earlier. We kind of done with shirt stays. We done with that life. <laughs> so, yeah. um, just trying to, as far as ordering. With adjustments going on, how does that work? Okay. So do you have suits right now in your existing wardrobe? I have I have the I have suits, yes, and I have the the one you sent in the box. Okay, cool. So it, does it fit right now or does it fit? Well, I haven't tried it on again. It fit when I first got it, but that's okay. been that's been like almost a month ago. All right, too too easy, buddy. Here's what you're gonna do. Um you have my private number. I do. Yeah, my email. Well, here, shoot me a text. We'll, we'll schedule a live virtual fitting. And if it doesn't fit, we'll just exchange it. How's that, bud? Good to go. Too easy. Now tell Thanks, me what sir. other store is going to do that. I don't know. <laughs> 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 no. I'm going to pat myself on the back now and then, right? All right. Um, any other questions? I got to have some kind of questions, some kind of, you know, some interaction here. All right. So you know, I got one. How does the fitting process work? Or you just want me to describe how your fitting process magic show works. And then do we have any volunteers to go through the A-Rod Carnival magic show? <laughs> anyone, anyone want to share how our process works? That purchase this from is, us? This is Jeff Womack. I can I can do that. All right, let Jeff do it. And and 
going back to the gentleman that just spoke about uh, becoming less fluffy, A-Rod has helped me over the last year um, drop several sizes. So, um, because I, I definitely ballooned up in retirement. And so, uh, congratulations on lo losing the weight. Don't buy too many things too quickly and uh, keep, keep going through that process of, of keeping those, those 10 items that you need, especially the white shirt that fits well. So the way, the way that the whole A-Rod circus, as Josh called it, works, is uh, A-Rod's going to set up a call with you, and he's going to get some some basic information from you. And, 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 and you know, I thought the first time I talked to him, I thought I was going to need to have a, a measuring tape and, and figure out what all my measurements were and all my, uh, all my vital points and stuff. And A-Rod said, what are you wearing? What sizes are you wearing right now? How do they fit? Um, how tall are you, what's your weight, what's your waist size, et cetera, et cetera. And he was able to, because of that 47 years of experience, uh, get right on board with uh, what would actually fit me uh, and where I was when we started. And then uh, once again, I just got a, I just got a package a few days ago. Thank you, A-Rod. You are on uh, your way too, brother. Uh, well, no, I got I got the black suit the other day for my my daughter's wedding, oh, nice. um, so um, you know he's he's able to to just just nail it on board. And if and if you guys that haven't done business with a Rod haven't figured it out um, through this call, um, he's a very generous, very giving, caring man who really wants to do the best for us and. Uh, He'll, he'll jump through hoops and, uh, you know, someone posted earlier that they had had a problem with the wrong color shirt being sent and he texted or emailed the company and within two minutes he was getting a, a, a text or a call back from A-Rod and, and I can validate that, you know, that that's the way things happen. If, if something, if something messes up, he's on it just just as quick as quick can be uh, of getting those things taken care of. So he doesn't leave you hanging. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, Tony, what was your question? You had a hand go up. Great summary, Jeff. Thank you for that. Uh, so now a lot of the new fashion is, I have a son that's in college now, business major. A lot of it is uh, a lot of guys are wearing the suits with uh, the pants with their ankles out. Yeah, and that's, that's, the, which, that's, the, that's the ultra slim, which I don't cover. But, okay. but I, I know all about, yeah, I, they wear their pants with short. It's almost like they painted the suit on. Yeah. Copy. That, that, that's their, that's the style. I mean, a lot of young, how, how old your son? Uh, 19. Yes. So I will tell you this from, I'm going to say 19 to probably 25. They're doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, but here's the thing. Remember the... The military community, as you're going out for that job interview or already landed that job, and you're wearing professional attire, that's what you're wearing. It's called professional attire. That other looks more of going out and making a fashion statement because that's what they want to do, right? <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't advocate it. Put it that way, my friend. Uh, but it is a good look for a young cat. I mean, why not? You know, here, they, here, here's the thing about that ultra high water look. That seven second rule. What, yeah. What's that hire? What's that hiring manager or someone else right. that's in a position of power? That's older. You walk in and your your pants are, are six inches off the ground. Um, you know, it, it, you may look good in it, but they may uh, all they may see is that that awkward middle school kid who has clothes that don't fit right. Yeah. You know? Yep. So that's true. Hey, who wants to win a sport coat? Who wants to win a sport jacket? Are there are there still women on the in the class? Yes, right. we're still here. All right, we're gonna give away one women's black blazer and we're gonna give away a sport coat for a gentleman. So okay, so first question for the ladies. Can you tell me or come close to the ten fashion items that stand the test of time that we just shared. 
jeans, leggings, the sport blazer, the, uh, what do you want to call it? Not the nice blazer, uh, heels, a nice bag or tote. Okay, I like it. Close enough. Did I say white shirt? Yeah, no, you're, 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 yes. wow. Yes. I'm impressed. So you, you were paying attention. Yes, there sir. There you go. All right, there you go. You get a woman's black, black, black blazer. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, I got a beautiful sport coat waiting for one of you guys out there. Are you ready? Here we go. What are the four dilemmas that most of you fall into? I don't know what to buy. don't have time to buy. I don't think I like the styling. It's one more. The, the, the first gentleman almost had it. Don't know what, what I like, I believe. I, well, I don't like the shop is one. I don't know what to buy. No, no time with it. I don't think what fits. That's okay. The, the, la the last one, I have a hard time distinguishing colors. Uh, on the go. size of the colors. Gotcha. All right. You got it, buddy. You got a coat. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I like this. This right. was from, who, who wrote this? I see that high water look on a lot of our Korean Asian men in general. Yeah. They have small, you know, they're smaller guys. <laughs> um, yep. All right. And any other questions for me? Yeah, I got a question. This is Jermaine. Jermaine, talk to me, brother. Hey, do you like Chicago? Um, uh, I think I asked you this before offline, but I'm going to ask it publicly today. Do you like certain cuff styles and pants, like Chicago cuff styles with the button tab going towards the back? You know, you no. ever seen them type of cuffs before? I like, I like huh? classic, understated, basic, and straightforward. Okay. Is that you know once you land a job, you are free to um, I, I do your own style. I want to piggyback on something that Jeff mentioned earlier. And again, Jeff, okay. thank you for the kind words, brother. It means a lot, man. Thank you, Jeff. You know, here's the thing I would tell all of you. We are not perfect. You know, we, we're growing too fast right now. Uh, it's, it's definitely been a challenge, thanks to all of you, that we've grown so rapidly, but that's not always a good thing. So publicly, as I'm talking here, I mean, I put, I put it on LinkedIn, but for those of you who didn't see it, we're really growing leaps and bounds. So we are having growing pains right now with deliveries and shipping, and, you know, it, it is when a company starts getting big. Truth be told, you know, I thought I was going to be, I was supposed to be semi-retired. You know, my son runs a day-to-day -day business. Um, our staff is, is, is all military, you know, Stefan will tell you, right. My friend, you know, yep. red ambassadors will tell you, Josh will tell you, Jeff will tell you. So the thing for us is if we ever come up short anywhere, fabrication, not delivering on time, whatever it may be, all I ask from all of you is an opportunity to make it right. That's all I ask. And you call me direct. I mean, I'm, I'm accessible, not all the time, but if you send me an email, you know, I get tons a day, but I'll make sure that I get to you in a timely manner. So all I ask is that, you know, that opportunity to make it right. Simple as that. Yeah. So thank you for that. a -Rod's doing great work. Again, I'm proud to be a brand ambassador with him. Thank you all for attending. If there are no further questions oh. on dressing, I think we may shift to talk certs for a minute. Okay, one last thing. Everyone also gets a $50 gift certificate. So just whenever you're ready and you don't have to, it's not towards a purchase. Let's say you need a shirt and tie. Let's say you need a pair of pants. Let's say you need whatever it may be, you could apply it to a sale, but if you just need to get something, get 50 bucks. So it's my way of saying, thank you for your service. There you go. I'm awesome. done everybody. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Thank you. It is, it is my That's pleasure. Nice. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Stephen, you have it's fantastic. And he didn't get to do his circus show, but I called him and said, I'm 5'9", 180, and he dialed every inch on my body over the phone. 
And I'm like, I swear you've got a camera in my car checking me out, right? It almost scared me when I was driving. And he's like, all right, you know, what's in your what's in your closet? And I was like, I got a, a dark blue and or a, almost gray and a gray. And he's like, all right, you need an indigo. And he's like, it's in the mail, right? And that was it. And I opened a box. I get a suit with a shirt and tie handpicked to match. I put it on and do a video consult. I'm like, I don't know how the hell you dialed me in on a phone call where I just told you my height and weight, but that was really impressive. And I've been a fan ever since, right? So, I mean, okay. it's truly great, you know, and I'm going to talk through some of the other pieces here on transition for those okay. that are in that I, world. I, I, I got to get running, Josh. Uh, thanks a lot. You take, you take it from here. Everyone, thank you. Make sure you get to Josh in regards to uh, – to make the list that has a $50 certificate, all the winners who won swag today, share this. Oh, Josh, can we take a picture? Is there any way of taking like a, a picture we can, so I can post? Yeah, we How can do we absolutely do that? do that. Everyone want to go cameras on for a minute so we can do a shot with everybody? That'd be awesome. I mean. Hey. All right. I mean, I'm not even there. Oh, I love that. Chris is in a metro somewhere. Hey, uh, Josh, t take off the uh, the shares. The, the, the yeah, I'm going to the airport. We can right get now. more people on there. Yeah. All right. Nice. There we go. That's what I'm talking All right. about. All right. <laughs> I love it. Three, I like a lot of new faces. Three, two, one, cheese. All right. Thanks, everyone. I got a shot. Appreciate it. Yeah, looking cosmic. <laughs> nice. Mr. Josh, That's send that to hard. me, my brother. Send that to me. All right. We'll do. Thanks, A-Rod. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate all of you. Have a great night. All right. For everyone sticking around, you're welcome, too. We're going to talk a uh, topic near and dear to my heart on certifications and transition in general. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Josh, real quick, I also need to run. Um, but like I said, if anybody's got any questions, you can reach, obviously reach out to Josh. You reach out to me. I put my stuff in the in the trend, in the the uh, chat. Um, and I'm, I, if you need general help with transition and, and I'm going to, if you have certifications and stuff, I, you know, I'll push you to people like Josh who know a lot more about certain areas than I do. Uh, but if you just want to get some guidance on the path to take or paths you may not have thought of, or just need somebody to vent to about how frustrating the transition process is, you have my number, you have my email address, you know, we're here to, we're, a lot of us are here for you. So don't do this alone. Thanks for doing this, Josh. Uh, God bless you, buddy. Thanks, Steven. Appreciate it. Uh, Steven's a great resource for those in transition. And most of us, again, volunteer our time to make it better than we went through. So I'm going to go a little tongue in cheek. I'm going to try to fly through this in a few minutes. You know, again, this isn't about our company, but I'm going to use our certs as a model. So don't feel pressured. Everyone needs to get a PMP, right? That's not why I do this, but it really is just about using that as an educational standpoint. Uh, right in the morning. Yeah. Right ahead. Right. Empower everybody. All right. So kind of a joke slash very real feeling that I had is that the most mature you're ever going to be in uniform as a college graduate because you still live at home. Mom and dad tell you what to wear and your whole purpose in life is making sure all your other siblings don't piss off mom and dad. Right, you know, I've told this to two stars, the command sergeant majors and chiefs, now kind of laugh at me in this uncomfortable feeling. That's really kind of what it was like. And for the first time ever, you get to decide what you want to do with your life when you're not living at home anymore. And that becomes a scary reality, right? So I'm hugely passionate to, you know, help bridge this divide overall. And that's why I want to walk through this a little bit. All right. So understanding professional certifications, I, I call this marketability versus value or attractiveness versus character, right? So I get called all the time. People say, hey, what certifications did I get, right? So I can make myself marketable. Like, that's like you asking me, what do I do to make myself attracted to everybody of the opposite sex, right? Like, that's just not how it works. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has their own viewpoint of what's attractive to them in the job environment. Now, certifications are great, and they can add value to what you bring to the table, but as far as attractiveness, that really comes down to the individual company, right? Each company gets to determine what certs carry more weight for the jobs that you're going after. And the best way to figure that out is to talk to somebody inside of the company. Okay, now what they can't take away is that the skills you learn, you take with you everywhere, all right? All right, so my background, I'm a Marine Corps veteran, aviation and logistics, two-time combat deployment. I'm now the chief strategy officer with PM Perlin, I'm a brand ambassador with Salute to Suit, right? So our vision as a company is trying to 
improve on military leadership through project management so that you're set up three to five years before transition. Okay, but what are certifications, right? This is kind of a new thing that I was exposed to a little bit, right? But certifications are awarded by a professional organization because you have demonstrated a set of knowledge, skills, and abilities, all right? Um, most of the world you work in, you want to hire somebody who's a certified professional, doctors, lawyers, construction folks, HVAC technician. I want to make sure that they've been trained and know how to do their job to some level of capability. Okay? In the military, we certify each other every year on our TO weapons. I have to demonstrate that I know how to use the weapon I'm assigned before I'm free to go employ it outside of supervision. Okay, so certifications carry a lot of similarity in that. The one other gap is that in companies don't have TNR manuals, right? Most companies don't hire you to develop you, they hire you to have a capability. So being certified by an outside organization helps you come in already capable. Okay, there's three categories, a certificate, a certification, a license. Certificate is kind of common. There's master's certificates and pick a topic at colleges. However, there's no governing body or final exam. These don't carry a lot of weight in industry, right? A certification or a license are very similar. Certifications are given by a governing body. Licenses are usually given by a state or a governmental entity. Okay, what it takes to be certified. Most certs worth anything require three things. Some level of training, some level of proficiency, and then some level of ability, right, or a test. Okay, so for PMP requires 35 hours, for Agile it's 21 hours, right? You have to have 36 to 60 months of experience for PMP, but everything in the military counts as a project. So if you have that many years in uniform, you're good, right? Agile requires about 18 months. Again, change-driven projects. Veterans do this very well. And ability, there's a proctored test. Okay, there are some certs that I will guide you against. It's a lifetime guarantee after an interview for $500. If it's really easy to get, a company probably doesn't care that you have it, okay? So just be careful when you're looking at investing in certifications. And last piece, most require maintenance, right? Think of it as proficiency. I have to demonstrate that I'm still a professional to maintain the credibility, be called a professional. Okay, tangible value. Certs, certified professionals on average make 20% more than non-certified, okay? So again, each job is specific. I know in some of the cyber world, it's even greater. Uh, some jobs require them to even be considered, right? I had a sergeant major, again, quoted here. He said, I wanted to get a job. I had all the quals. They asked me if I had my PMP. I said, no, they said, sorry, you're not even considered in the running. Now, that doesn't apply to every job, but in some cases, it is a deal breaker. So know what the job requires and pursue what the job says you're supposed to have, okay? Now, I'm going to talk about clothing and why there's a similarity. All right, intangible values. Right, relatability with other professionals. Okay, most of what industry knows about the military comes from Hollywood. Okay, like it or not, that's what a lot of civilians know. So thank you, Top Gun. Everyone's a tail chasing flyboy, or thank you, Hurt Locker, thank you, whatever, right? Their perception is based on what they see in the news or via media. So walking in a professional helps you have relatability with the organization, speaking the language the industry expects you to speak. Okay. Uh, for me, it had professional credibility with other project managers, right? You have a PMP, I have a PMP. We speak the same language. We've been through the same painful process. We all got certified. We can talk together. So there's a connection and a bond with industry. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I was just going to point out, uh, I've, been, I've been retired now for 11 years. And the, the thing about a certification, the, the big thing that you talked about, the terminology, the vocabulary. Um, civilians are so afraid that they will not be able to understand us and that we're going to speak some foreign language. We speak military. We don't speak, you know, Boeing or, or whichever company, Amazon, whatever, and, and having the certifications and like EMP, understanding, having those, the verbiage that is within PMI and PMP that helps them to feel better about us in general. Yep, absolutely. That's kind of that confidence building too, right? I walk into the interview and I know I can relate to you and I know I'm speaking the right terms. My star stories, right, in the interview process are using the terms that are common with the people I'm talking to, right? And we do this. If I'm hiring a worker to come work in my house and I can't understand what he's selling me, I'm probably not going to hire him, right? He may be the best ever, but I can't talk to you or believe that you really understand what I need 
So it creates a divide. Whether you like it or not, it's a reality. Okay, false perception divide. We've talked about industry terminology, confidence, and then the application, right? So I know for project management, I've learned that every company thrives on projects, right? A project's primary objective is to satisfy customer intent and make money. Well, guess what? Every company exists to solve those two things. So what I've learned in project management, I've used in construction, I've used in consulting, I've used it as an entrepreneur. Okay, so the skills I've learned have given me tools everywhere that doesn't guarantee that the company wanted to hire me or necessarily pay me what I was worth because I was certified, right? And then last one, some companies value search more than formal learning. Amazon's kind of a lead pioneer in this world, right? You want to get into the AWS space, you better have the AWS search. Okay, so why pursue certifications in uniform? Okay, industry skills overlap and complement military skills. I'll tell you, project management fits very, very well into every current doctrinal concept in the DoD. Okay, military training provides a foundation, right? This goes beyond even project management. Military experience can qualify you to become certified, right? You don't have to have civilian experience. You can use military experience, but you got to find a company that can translate it. Some certs add promotion points, right? ASI, SSI, the Air Force, there's an innovation SEI for PMP and Agile right now called Innovation Project Manager. And the Army, Lean Six Sigma gets you promotion points. Engineers have an SSI there. Right, so knowing the cert can actually add to your promotability. Um, it's a chance to experience industry, right? If I don't know what I wanna do, pursuing a class funded by the military lets me expose myself to that type of business. If I hate the training program, I probably don't wanna keep getting a job in that line of business, all right? So it's a chance to taste industry and Army CA is great for that, right? Said all soldiers right now have 4K per year that's use or lose. It covers certifications. The Coast Guard just launched a program that's $4,500 per year, use or lose. Okay, take advantage of it to try things out. And then the last one, many companies want post-certification experience, not I got it yesterday and I've never done anything with it. Okay, All right. Reasons to pursue it, right? Number one, the company I want to work for says I have to have it. Number two, the jobs I'm interested in, it keeps popping up over and over again. Or number three is intellectual curiosity. Okay, the closer you get to the transition, the more it better be for number one, right? The job I want, I know I need it to upgrade, okay? When to pursue them. Okay, the farther out you are, the more time you have to explore and be creative, okay? Say three to five years out, it's a great point to kind of start dabbling into industry, using your educational benefits to pursue it. But the closer you get, the more you have to be dialed in. Okay, not all certs are the same. Okay, like you said, if they're easy, lifetime guarantees, companies probably aren't looking for it. So don't just buy the sales pitch. Make sure the company and the job you're going after require it or just do it for intellectual curiosity and understand that you're getting it, but it may not open a door. All right, we talked about this marketability. I call attractiveness your ability to be found or be shiny. Okay, it's like bait throwing in the water, right? Certs are good for this. They do help you be findable. But that doesn't mean the job you want actually aligns with what you are going after, right? And the second one is character or value, the skills you bring to the table. Make sure you're going after one of these, okay? If you're not filling in one of these two areas, then it's probably a waste of time. Okay, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? The question, do things that make you marketable drive up your earning potential in an organization? What do you guys think? It's a great, it depends. Absolutely. Most of the time it does, but you have to talk to somebody on the inside to find out. The first company that hired me cared that I was a vet. They did not care that I was certified because I used a headhunter that was placing vets and that's all the company wanted. Right. So I learned quickly. If I left, I could double my salary because I was certified. Right. So do your homework. It depends. Not every company will value certs the same way. So my first job didn't, but know what you bring to the table and know your life requirements. And that's, again, part of another class. Okay, understand that getting hired is a business transaction. If you think of your resume as a business proposal to a company and their job post as a request, the more I understand what the company is hiring for, what need they have, the better I can shape my response to their proposal to be best value, lowest risk. Okay, again, what's more compelling? Someone uncertified with no direct past performance or someone certified with years of demonstrated past performance and skill. Okay, those that have dealt with civilian industry understand the bidding process. The more past performance you have, the more value you get to hold, the less risk it is to become hired. Okay. 
All right, transition advice number one in the job hunt, you are the weapon. Your resume is the bullet. You have to know how well your knowledge, skills, and abilities align with the job requirements. Okay, if you have gaps, fill them in. So think about like a 22 versus a 308. Okay, if you do not carry the caliber necessary to hunt the job you want, upgrade your weapon system. Okay. Second one, no one has experience until you start, even going company to company, right? Don't think that because you don't have direct experience, you can't get the job or shouldn't apply to it, right? Let somebody inside the company tell you you're not qualified and know, but understand a proper perspective. Know what you bring to the table, know what you can do, be able to rate, relate your experiences using industry terms and skill bridge internships are a great way to get your foot in the door and fill in gaps. All right, ways to pay for certification. Like I mentioned, soldiers, Army CA, 4K per year, every fiscal year. Coast Guard CA, $4,500 a year. Air Force Cool, enlisted airmen at $4,500 in their career. Unit training funds is how I got mine paid for. The GI Bill, tuition reimbursement, veteran discounts, onwards opportunity, and act now education. But right? there are a lot of great ways to get it funded, but on active duty, there are funding means to get this stuff taken care of, right? All right, so Roberto, soft skills versus hard skills. That's a great question, Roberto. And on some, it's both. And that's where hard skills, I kind of think of it like becoming a surgeon versus a general doctor. Um, in some companies, in some jobs, kind of that soft people skilling relates even more. In other organizations, the technical skills are going to matter more. Like cybersecurity, programming, things like that. Some of those technical skills are going to really be critical. But if you don't people well, I don't really care how good your technical skills are, you're not going to last very long. But as you go up into managerial roles, you get up into business development roles, soft skills or people skills really start to shine, right? Can I carry the room? Am I articulate? Can I listen to somebody? Can I clearly communicate, right, using written and verbal means? Can I brief, you know, CEOs down to new hires and the janitor and be respectful to everybody? Can I plan? Can I be accountable, right? A lot of the things the military brings into the table are a lot of those soft skills already. We just have to be able to articulate how much we really can do, I think, to the industry. Does that answer your question, Roberto? If you have a different perspective too, by all means, share it and bring it up. Yes, that definitely answers it. I just keep hearing like, what are your soft skills? What are your hard skills like? I mean, then I hear other people say like, you either have them or you don't. I'm like, uh, well, can you explain though? Like a little, and you, you explained it well, I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, I think, think of like people skills versus technical skills. I think, you know, Jeff, yeah. you got it. Go yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to say. Um, out, out in the real world, uh, Roberto, um, what I've already mentioned it earlier, you know, the civilian community, a lot of times, um, as Josh pointed out, they, what they know about the military is what they've seen on TV and seen on movies. So they're really worried that we're all going to be some, um, you know, Marine drill instructor that's going to get up in, in, in their HR department's face and start screaming and yelling and stuff like that. And so, you know, uh, if, if you haven't already gone out and gotten your free LinkedIn um, premium. premium account, you need to go and do that and then start using the LinkedIn learning and, and start looking at some of those uh, soft skills. It's the people skills, the how, how to work with stuff. Um, you know, it's 2022, uh, so diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, you know, your, your MEO courses that you have to take every year, your military equal opportunity. Um, you know, go out and, and take those uh, DEI courses and, and the different things like that, um, because the people skills, are, you know, a lot of times the companies aren't worried about us being able to do the technical. They know we can do yeah. the technical. They're worried about the soft skill. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, Jeff, that's a great feedback. And honestly, my interview, I mean, they validated my technical skills in my resume. And my interview for my last company was a, a one hour bullshit fest on bad leaders we had in the military. And all my boss was assessing is, could he handle me? Did he like talking to me? And did he like interacting with me? Because he, again, he was a Navy vet. He's like, I know what you bring to the table. I know what your certs say, but do you have the personality for me to want to work with you? Right. And that's where I think when you look at the, the interview part, right? Like I had a friend on the inside 
He told me what was critical to highlight in my resume so that the hiring manager would be attracted to my resume and validate being hired. That started the conversation, but then the conversation was more about you as a person, right? It wasn't, do you have the capability? I can teach capability. I can't teach people anything, right? And I think that's where veterans come into the world well, but why project management is a huge passion is one of the key areas is called stakeholder management or stakeholder engagement, right? Most of the time in the military, we see stakeholders as those that outrank us, that can screw us over. So we know how to manage and appease up the chain of command, right? But in a business sense, a stakeholder is every potential buyer, every customer, everyone inside of the organization, and every one of those people has a relative level of interest and influence to my project, right, or my mission. And I have to understand where they fit and how to communicate with them in a way that's going to resonate with how they hear information. Right, communication isn't tac chat two or tac chat one. If it's tactical or logistics, it's the message I send via the medium and how frequently to influence people's actions. Right, and that's again what I learned in project management that I've got to bring into the G four. Right, and say, look, we need to plan better because we don't consider the E one as important as the O ten in our communication strategy. Right, so being able to share that helps coming in with certs validates the hard skill part. Being able to relate and communicate validates the soft skill part. Does that make sense? It sure does. Okay. All right. If you're curious on ranks alignment with project management, I'm going to go through a few slides that all look very similar. This one's geared more towards unit funding, right? 25K without a contract is how much you can spend at a unit level on a credit card. All right. Army, same thing. If it's 4K with soldier and then Air Force cool. But point being, look, you could start getting Agile certified, which has 600,000 jobs on the outside by E3 to E4. Okay, Lean Six by E5, PMP by E6, if you want it. On the officer side, you know, 020304 is a great continuum to start thinking about these things. Most people think they have to be a senior officer, senior enlisted to get their PMP. That is not the case. All right. And all of these things fit and nest very, very well into the military leadership continuum. And I'll go deep dive on this later if you guys want, but an agile team is 12 or less dealing with rapid change, right? Every small tactical team I know of fits that definition, right? And an agile team is about empowerment and trust, okay? So that is our passion. That is our drive is making people better while they're in uniform, okay? All right, all these certs integrate, right? Agile, lean, and PNP overlap with one another. And if you're curious, these are the types of stuff you do in the military that you could use for the applications, right? Targeting cycles, Intel integration, SOP development, document development, policy is all agile. But Lean 6 is equipment readiness, maintenance, supply chain, admin inspections, and then PMP is more on the strategic and operational planning side of that. Okay. And if you want to talk to me later, send me a note, send my team a note. We'll talk to you about it. I'd love to get a class scheduled at your location, you know, funded for free somehow if we can. But if you want to know the value of your cert, go type it into LinkedIn. Okay, if you want to do a drill right now, go into LinkedIn in the search bar, type PMP and hit jobs in the US. I guarantee the number is actually bigger than that right now. Looking for PMP. Go type the word agile into LinkedIn and see how many jobs pop up looking for agile. It's actually more than that right now. Okay. So if you're going to pursue a certification, know what the jobs are that align to it and how many doors it's going to open for you. Okay, for us, the final takeaway, we don't want to be in the firefight trying to upgrade your weapon system, realize you don't have enough ammo, chow, and water. Okay, that is my driving passion, helping vets, why I have a podcast coming out with Soldier for Life, and why I work with Salute to Suit on Dress for Success. Okay, your wardrobe is part of that system to help you get ready for transition, right? Build your weapon system early and your support system early, so when you're in the fight, you're simply refining your aim and taking out. Um, Andrea, are there certifications for change management? There is. There are two, ProSci has one, and then CCMP is a cert as well. Um, if I was not doing what I'm doing right now, change management would be the business I would go into because I love it. Um, oh, cost comparison certs. That one? Jason, does that go where you wanted? Yeah, that's right. I just, I just missed it there. Okay, thank you. That's fine. I'm trying to decide which one to do, and that, that's, that's going to be a driving factor. I'm doing the uh, O2O program. Okay, what's your branch of service? 
um, army. Right. You still have CA to use until the last day you are legally in the military. So hit me up afterwards if you want, but you can probably get two of these funded before Christmas. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hey, Josh, I have some questions. Okay. So I'm uh, not retired, but I'm a veteran. I got out of the uh, AGR, which is active duty, on uh, 2019. Then I was on a com convalescent leave for over eight months. After that, I was at the reserve until January 2021. Okay. I went through the transition centers. Somehow I missed the whole concept of it and I didn't get like any uh, search or whatever things people get through a transition when I get out so I can convert them to a civilian life. And uh, after that, I start driving trucks over the road, doing side gigs, just to get by all the time. Yeah. And uh, on April this year, I got hurt while doing some adventures in Ute, desert in Utah. And then I had to stay eight weeks on a bed rest through my uh, fractured bone in my spine. Mm. Now I'm back in my feet, but struggling to find a job. So I see this search over here that you mentioned here, there are a lot of those. Yeah. And when do we get those? Like Lean Six, six, six Sigma Green Belt. Yeah. I was at 88 Mike and 92 Yankee in an army ward for 12 years. So I ran, I ran supply for battalion, uh, H I mean, headquarters and uh, company size as well. I uh, dealt with WARX, CSTX, training, multiple nation trainings and stuff like that at the division level. But being a young buck, not having the knowledge of where to get all the certification and everything was, uh, was available for me out there by the time I was in service and what it's still available for me now that I'm out of service. So in, in, in short, What's available now for us? I know I have a J bill or post on 11. So for, to, for you right now, I mean, so GI bill changed its policy in August to finally cover the training, not just the exam fees, right? So for you with GI bill, you can do PMP through us. We are the only approved training company. It took us almost a year to get it, right? Because even the GI bill, the VA doesn't know how to evaluate a trainer instead of a college. Like, you know, what's your graduation rate? I'm like, I don't proctor the test, right? PMI does. What's your pass rate? And I'm like, I don't know. You got to ask them. And it took us forever to go back and forth for them to validate the quality of what they wanted to compare us to like a college. But you have the GI Bill that you can use, at least for PMP. There may be other trainers for lean or other programs to try to find out. Onward to Opportunity, I think would be a great program to look at if you want to. It's one free cert um, plus exams. Any veteran or their spouses can tap into it. Right, they're a great program to start with. Their lean program is fantastic. It's aligned to ASQ, right? Their PMP, I think leaves a little bit to be desired because I'm an alumni of their program, but uh, there are resources. If you want to hit me a call afterwards or send me a note, by all means, let me know. Yeah, Act Now Education is a phenomenal group, okay? Um, Act Now has so many resources as well, especially in the cyber world, Right, the PMP stuff is through Percipio. It's like self-paced and that's like learning a foreign language from a foreign language teacher that you can't talk to. But their cyber stuff, their other educational scholarships, I think I would definitely hit up Jay Sanders with Act Now Education um, as a tremendous resource. Edlin, like there are so many scholarships and opportunities that are out there through them. I would definitely hit up Act Now Education. Um, Jeff, thanks for that note. And that's why I add them on the list, you know, as resources to go to. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. If, is it Edlin? Yes, sir. Yeah, man, if, if you're not on ACT now, you, you need to go, like, soon as we're finished with this, go like them on Facebook, request to join the, um, the Facebook group, because more stuff is on the group than is on the page, uh, because they have to kind of keep it, some of the stuff kind of on the hush-hush. 
Josh is active on there. I'm active on there. But like I said, I'm I'm actually going to uh, be getting a, a absolutely 100% free master's degree uh, thanks to uh, Jay Salters. And Jay Jay's actually still active duty Navy. Um, and everybody on ACMAL are, are volunteers, just like Josh and stuff. So um, go go out there, man. There's all kinds of stuff. And, and for the change management, there's there's some stuff on there, too. Yeah, change management is still a pretty new field. Like I said, I'm trained by ProSci, who were one of the initial developers of change management. Their training allows you to get your CCMP, but CCMP is a proctor test by another organization. I'm looking to get into that because I believe in it, but right now in the army, no one's teaching it. But change management as a field is essentially creating adoption of concepts in the human element, not the project element, right? They run hand in hand with PMP and change management. ProSec also the project change triangle. One side is the project plan, the other side is the human adoption plan, right? But I'm a huge fan of change management. It's just, if you type the job search field, there's about 180,000 to 200,000 jobs of change managers, but there's only about a thousand asking for a cert to get it because even industry is trying to figure out what is a change manager and what do they need to be successful there. Um, pro size expensive as hell. I will tell you the only reason I got it is my company paid for it. Otherwise I would not invest the five grand to get the cert. Um, so be careful, but you know, Andrea, to your point, I think I would start talking to people who are change managers. Jeff Frontner is a, is a good friend of mine. Um, You want to look him up. Um, he's now the director of change management for another one of our alumni uh, who hired him. So I love it when I see our alumni hiring each other through ProLearn. Um, to the comment on the schedule, yes, you can go on our website and there is a, a schedule listed available. If you fill out the info from the QR code, we will just engage back with you and figure out what you want to do and when to sign up, right? That's just our way to reach out and contact you. And I've got to fix the link on that form to see the current class. CA opens up again in about October for FY23 as far as registration goes. Um, Google Project, I think the Google Project Management Certification sounds really nice. Um, it's a good start to get your feet wet and learn terms for free, but it is not gonna get you PMP ready and it is not recognized by anybody outside of Google. So it's good that it's free and it's good that it's free. Um, and that's about where it starts. A lot of LinkedIn learning classes are the same way, right? Like it's it's good to start with, but it really just depends. Um, if anyone doesn't know what they want to be when they grow up, uh, facility management actually is really cool. And I'm actually working with another company to build a classified facility management training program to stand out as well. Um, PGMP GI Bill, uh, possibly. Right now, you have to have over 100 students pass the test before you can apply to be certified by the VA. Our next is Lean Six. Um, and then we're trying to get PMI to add Agile even to the GI Bill list because it doesn't exist yet. So PMP is it for right now. And then we'll try for what's next. But if you're looking at PGMP, I would make sure the company you want to go after says you have to have it. Most companies for program managers still want PMP. So... Um, the GI Bill eligibility is about six weeks of eligibility, about a month and a half, including the test for p, &P. Uh, Positions best required, a desired security clearance. Uh, that's all on the company. Some do, some don't, right? Most project management positions outside of the government don't care about a clearance. Everything in the government usually requires secret or higher. But again, do your research with the company. So... Well, these are great questions, and I tell folks there's a hunting analogy I give too in the job hunt. Don't be a fisherman using your resume as bait, right? Take a targeting approach. Um, yeah, data centers require it. That's a good point. You know, Facebook or others require that you at least have a clearance or had a clearance. Um, but using a hunting analogy in your job search, the first question is who are you, what do you need, and why are you hunting in the first place, right? Start figuring out what your life requirements are. Talk to a hunting guide, find a spotter, right? Connect with a veteran inside the organization to ask them, why are you there? What does it need? Yeah, Pimbach. Uh, sorry, I answered that one from Malcolm in a minute. Um, but that connection on the inside can help you assess, do I even want to go on the first date? Do I even want to apply to the company? How mature is the job? How do I compare to what's required? And I call it a weapon system assessment. 
right? Talking to an insider lets you assess what you bring to the table versus what's required. So I know where to invest my time and energy, right? Don't upgrade to become marketable everywhere, right? You can't do mission planning without an objective. You have to know the job you want, the target you're going after. So you can then upgrade your system, but also pair your weapon. The bullet, your resume has to be crafted for a known target, either the algorithm or an individual. And you have to know what's important to each of those so you can put the right things on your resume to start the conversation, right? It's a different way to look at it. I was simply a fisherman and I used a headhunter, which I call trout fishing. That's just a way to get guaranteed fish, right? But if you wanna figure out, does it align to me? You have to learn to know yourself outside of the family environment first, which again, I'll be given another class called the Empowered Transition here in a few weeks. I'll push it out again via social media to those that wanna sign up. And there's a podcast, a seven part series coming out with Soldier for Life on the same topic here starting this month. And Dress for Success is one of those chapters with A-Rod. So uh, Malcolm, to your point, Pinbox 7, I think it's a worthless document. Sorry to bust everyone's bubble. Pinbox 6 is really good. Pinbox 7 is horrible. Um, and for the test, they integrated 10 other references into the content for the exam. So we give you everything you need in terms of study materials, but Pinbox 7 is not worth the paper it's written on. Just give me page 25 out of Pinbox 6, that'll do a whole lot better than Pinbox 7. Um, for those that aren't project managers, sorry if I'm talking a language you have no idea what I'm talking about, but um, it's essentially McPP on steroids or MDMP on steroids. Um, it takes you from actually writing the plan to executing the mission with a fidelity and quality needed to be successful. So um, any comments, certifications like a well-fitted suit, both make sure you show up looking like a professional to the interview. Um, open challenge if anyone disagrees with that. Right, but you've got my info here. You've got my LinkedIn now. You've got my cell phone, my email, and our company. But what can I do to answer? Question: 